Hi, Mary. How are you? What's up? How are you? I was worried that maybe I missed something, that there's nobody else. No, on. no, no. <laughs> what, what page did we leave last time? Because I, I think I, because I quit earlier. Okay. I'm going. I think we uh, early this during, so I think it was uh, I think we're in 99. 99. Okay. <laughs> No more date checking into the David Citadel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just have to rent a car, right? I just, by the way, I just booked a flight for the Yomats Mod. We're leaving Wednesday night. Yeah, well. No, El Al was more, we found a, a, a much cheaper version on British Airways. Fifty-two hundred. We got it for like thirty-six hundred. Via, via London. London. Yeah, so you got to. Well, Ella, listen to the other problem with Ella. Hi guys. Let's Hello. just let's wait until some people call in. Ella leaves Thursday at two p.m. We arrive in Israel at two p.m. Friday afternoon. That's cutting it too short. Yeah. It's in April. It's last week of April. The, so, but British Airways, if you leave 10 o'clock Wednesday night, I'm leaving anyway. I got to take off Thursday. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Right. I work Wednesday. So, and then you arrive like 11 p.m. Thursday night. So you have the oh, shop. Yeah, and then it's just cheaper. I mean, yeah, you got to do a stop, but it's, it's significantly cheaper. Mm -hmm. I you know, when we I'm going out all next week and I'm going out in December because we've got, I mean, Around five, those were around 5,000, and there was no alternative. The other way, sometimes it's much more expensive now. But you have a question, you can't leave on Sunday morning. That would be too much to do with uh, your whole program. You, 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 program. Yeah, yes, you'd miss the Monday. I don't mind spending the Shabbos before, and then I leave, we come home Sunday. You, spend, you basically you spend a week, and a, and a Shabbos, Shabbos and a week. Exactly. Okay, everybody. Um, hope everybody had a good week. Right, we're on page 99. The standing during the Amida. In this year, we'll continue studying some of the halachas of the Shemona Esrei and focus on the proper positioning of the body, including the requirement to stand, how to place one's feet, hands, and whether to remain still. We'll also discuss how to properly maintain one's focus on the tefillah without distraction. The Shmon Esrei, which means 18, since it originally consisted of 18 brachos, is also known as the Amida, the standing prayer. The obligation to stand during this tefillah is derived from the following pasuk: Avram, Vayeshkem Avram Baboker, Elavakom Asher Amadsham. Right? Avram arose in the morning to the place where he had stood there before God. This pasuk, which references Avram's prayer to Hashem on behalf of the people of Sodom, is viewed by Chazal as the source for the notion that Avram instituted shachris. According to the Midrash, the term had stood there also teaches that one must stand for Shmon Esri. Ela makom asher amad sham, says the Midrash Psikta Zutrasa. And this is a later Midrash. Zutfila Shachris. Mikadamu Chazal Avram Tikein Filas Ashachar. Tfila Mu'umid. It's a davening that you have to do standing up. The Rambam lists standing during the Mida as one of the requirements for reciting it properly, along with a number of other requirements. He does add, though, that if it is impossible to stand, then one may sit. This is the Rambam Hilchos Tefillah.
Shmona Dvorim Tzorach Ben Spalu Yizar Ben Lassai Son. Bimaya Dachuk. If there's some kind of emergency, Onenas. He's got an emergency, Oshaovar Velo Asa Oisan. And he was over and he didn't do these things. Einan Ma'akvin. It doesn't prevent you from getting schar for the Shmon Esrei. Elohen Amida, Nochach HaMikdash, that you have to daven facing the base of Mikdash. V'tikun Aguf, you have to prepare your body. V'tikun HaMalbushim, you have to wear certain clothes. V'tikun HaMakom, meaning your place has to be a certain place, like clean. V'ashav call, you have to control your voice. And then at certain points during the Shemona Esrei, there's Kriya, bowing, v'yishtachava, bending at the waist. So then he goes through in detail, Amida Ketzad, a mispalim elam umid. Hayoyosha v'svino bagola, let's say he was sitting in a train or a wagon or on a boat. So, im yocha lamod yamod, v'im lav yeshe b'mkom v'yispalo, like the airplane and the other place, the trains. You notice the footnote says the Medrash was written in the 11th century, very late, as, as I said. Many Midrashim were written about the time of the Tanoim. Some were written after the Tanoim in the Gaonic period. This one's very late, after the Gaonic. The tour adds that the reason one stands for the Shmon Esri prayer is because it is called Avoda. Therefore, it should be formed in a similar manner as the sacrifices that were offered the base of Mikdash, which is also called the Avodah. And the Kohen in the base of Mikdash had to stand. Says to Orachayim, Simon Sadik Ches, The tefillah that we have today takes the place of sacrifice. We shall pay back the cows with our lips. That's a pasuk in Oshea. Uksiv ulav do b'chol avavchem. That's v'hayam shamoa, which we just learned. V'chiyesh avoda b'leiv. And the ezu avoda b'leiv haviyomer zu tefila. The avoda b'leiv is tefila. V'lachen. Tzorach lizar shetei dugmas akorbin. So because the, the davening takes the place of the korbonos, the manner in which the korbonos were brought has to be the same way. The kavana, you have to have the right intent. We know that there are machshavos when the koyen is shechting, we're doing the zrika of the korban. If you have in mind, for example, to eat tomorrow, or, or to do the zrika tomorrow, or in a different place. So yeah, that's a machshavis pigul, and it will invalidate the korban. So umedumi davoid to receive lamod l'shares. The korbanos have to do also have to be done standing up. Bashvos or golim kekohanim b'shas avoid. We the kohanim would put their feet together. During the avoda, and we have to do the same thing. Ukviyas mokum kamar korbanis, and we have a mokum kavua when we daven, similar to there was a special mokum where korbanis were offered. For example, kodshe uh, kodshim, like a shlami, like a korbanola or a chatas, had to be done in the north. If you didn't do it in the north, the the there's a dividing line straight down the oil moyed in the middle. So there's the north of that and the south of that. So those, the kotche kotchim had to be shechted in the north. You didn't shech them in the north, it was possible. So they're saying that the makam that we are koiveya in shul, where we daven, is in a sense a similar kind of, co kind of concept like the kotchim, where if you didn't shech it, in the right place. We didn't do the Zrika on the Mizbeach. There are certain geographic locations that if you don't fulfill them properly, 
in the base of Midrash, you didn't fulfill the Korban. The same thing by the Amida. Like we said, each Korban has a specific place to do the Shechita. The Zrika Saddam, for example, Chatas had to be offered on the four corners of the Mizbeach. Other Korbanos, you just had to do Zrika on one side. Others had to be done on a corner. So you covered two sides. So Matan Domim was different depending on the Korban. There could be a chatzitza. The Kohanim usually want, they didn't wear shoes. There would be a chatzitza between, between their feet and the floor of the base of Mikdash. Um, same thing. You, you couldn't have any chatzitza between the kli that you were holding and um, and your hand. So similarly with the, with the Shimon Esrei, if you are davening next to a wall, there shouldn't be something between you and the wall. So the Shulchan Aruch compares Shimon Esrei to a korban and standing while reciting it in a manner similar to offering a korban. Hatfilei b'mokam korban, says the Shulchan Aruch, or Chaim Tzadikhez. L'chein tzorach lizor shetei dugmas a korban v'kavono, it's got to be similar that you have a good machshavah. Lo yarv ba machshavah sacheres. You shouldn't be thinking about business or other things. What do you mean nine p.m. start? Where is everyone? Jacob Goldfinger. No, we are learning now. What? But not today. Well, one message was was mine because uh, we didn't start exactly. I was on that day, but uh, obviously we were all together. No, but I meant Gold Jacob Goldfinger at nine p.m. Oh. start. No, no he's, last signing week. he's signing on. Now. So can I ask you the, from the uh, idea of a carbon being in a mokam kavua? Is that where we get the concept of having a mokam kavua and beta in Beit Yes, exactly. I tried to make the analogy just. Yeah. Just like if you didn't shech the chattis in the north, if you did it in the south, it would be possible. So you're makam kavun, you've established a specific place where you have to daven. Mm -hmm. And if you if you vary that, it could, it, it, remember, the Rambam started off by saying, it's not li'ikuva. None of this is li'ikuv. Einon ma'akvin, it doesn't, it doesn't disqualify. disqualify, but to do it minamufchar, Bernie Manderer asked, so does that mean that where we stand in shul, our makam kavua, is it like, that's exactly what the tour is saying, that establishing a makam kavua where you daven is like establishing that the korban chattis has to be shechted in the north. And if otherwise it would be disqualified. It's not like we're gonna, our feel is gonna be disqualified, but it's setting up a certain kviyas makam. <clears throat> additionally, we're on 101. Additionally, the Mishnah Burr cites earlier authorities such as the Ma'ariel, right? The Ma'ariel is one of the most important Ashkenazic poskim in Germany uh, in, you know, 1200, 1300, similar to the Marami Rottenberg. And, and so the Ramah will always, you know, when he's quoting an earlier Ashkenaz posseg that the Ramah, you know, in his glosses on the Shulchan Aruch, where he says, oh, this is the Ashkenazic meaning. So the Maharil is one of the major Ashkenazi rish Rishonim. So the Mishabur cites the Maharil, who would already stand up slightly before the beginning of the Amida prayer, so that he would be prepared to begin the Amida with a calm and focused mind. Cause of the Darke Moshe. Who's the Darke Moshe? It's Rav Moshe Isserlish. So just like, just <clears throat> like we learn the Beis Yosef, when you, to really learn Shulchan Aruch well, you always wanna look at the base, the tour. The main commentary of the tour was the Beis Yosef, Rav Yosef Karo. That's what he, that was his first major work. 
Also, he wrote the Kesef Mishnah, which is the, the major commentary on the Ramba. So many halachic authorities, before they'll look at the Shulchan Aruch itself, they'll learn the Beis Yosef and the Kesef Mishnah to see where, what is the Beis Yosef's thoughts on these matters. And then you see Ari Paskins, because there he elaborates, oh yeah, Tosfis, the Rosh, the Rif. In the Shulchan Aruch, the, the Rav Yosef Kar doesn't tell you, he just gives you the halacha. But if you want to know where the Rav Yosef Kar got it from, so similarly, if you want to know where the Ramah came up with the halacha, so he wrote a sefer called the Darke Moshe, Moshe Israelish. And so the Darke Moshe has a lot of the background material in what the Ramah says. The Ramah also sometimes will say, Yeshomrim Shemutr. Who's the Yeshomrim? Well, if you want to know the Yeshomrim, so the Darke Moshe is the work of the Ramah on that you can find and you'll see where, where the Ramah is getting it. So cause of Darke Moshe, Marilai Anoig Lamad Bishakus at Philist Yudchas, Matai Shit Khilashats to Hilos Le El Yo. Like our minig that we already start standing up by Tihilos Le El Kel is a very old minig. It goes all the way back to the Maril, says the Mishnah Burak. Uvi Mincha Kishyevida Shaz of Nea Teva. That means when the Chazan by Mincha goes to the Omid, that's when he would stand up, even though he's going there to do Ashrei. But that was that's the preparatory to Uva Arvis, Kishi Ischalashat's Kaddish. So the standing up when you're Davin Meyer, then you stand up for Kaddish there, the Chatsi Kaddish before Shmon Esrei. So it has to do with standing up in preparation for the Amida. You should spit out any sputum or whatever you got, you know, clear your mind, get ready to dump. What about leaning or sitting during Shmon Esrei? Since one is obligated to stand for Shmon Esrei, the base Yosef, again, Rav Yosef Karo, infers that not only may one not sit down completely, but one should also not lean on something or something else. You shouldn't lean against your table or against your friend. That's called Amida from the side. It's not, doesn't fulfill uh, the criteria for Amida. Rav Yosef Karo ultimately codifies this in the Shulchan Aruch. The Mishnah Bura offers two reasons for why one may not lean. One must stand during Shmona Esrei, and leaning does not qualify as standing. Shmona Esrei must be recited with trepidation. The Mishnah Bura then notes that the practical difference between these two reasons would be where one leans slightly on something else, but still supports one's own weight, such that if the object was removed, he would not fall. According to the first reason, that is permissible, but according to the second, it's forbidden. The Mishnah Bura rules that one may be lenient in a case of need. Hatan that feel it's right? The Mishnah Bura says, the reason why leaning is not good, because you got to stand. Leaning is not a midah. There's a little lean. If they would remove that thing, you wouldn't fall down, sorry. Well, the ema, you can't be the when you're leaning. So, so like during the Ela, you know, if you're going to lean a little bit, Yom Kippur, they, you can see that the Mishnah Bura is lenient. We saw above that the Rabban permits reciting one answer while sitting, if one is unable to recite it while standing, such as where one is traveling. The Shulchan Aruch accepts this leniency as well and applies it to one who is ill, Adding, they may even recite the Amida while lying down. 
Cholam is palo filu shochev on sido. Ushi yachol achabin daito as long as he can have kavana. The imi yefshar lo lis palo. Mi kol mokum yahar belibo shenemar. Imru bilvavchem al mishkavchem. You should think the words. You should be maharer. Think the words in his heart. If he can't, let's say, his his jaw is wired shut, right? Because he's had a, a jaw fractures. I mean, he can't speak. The Mishnah writes that one who is elderly and cannot stand may also sit while reciting Shmon Esrei. Though he should stand at least for the times of bowing, if possible. Can sit. If at the time when you bow down, if he could stand, Rav Shlomo Zalman Abach rules that one traveling on a plane or a bus may recite Shmon Esrei while sitting if necessary, such as where it's impossible to stand or too early to daven before leaving his house and should not stand in the aisle. However, one who is not sick and not in any other pressing certain situation is certainly obligated to stand the chathila. What about walking during Shmon Esrei? We have learned so far that one is generally obligated to stand while reciting Shmon Esrei. Is one permitted to walk or move when necessary while remaining standing. The Mishnah Bura, based on the Chayyotim, writes that if one loses his concentration during Shemona Esrei, either due to a safer falling on the floor or because he cannot remember where in the tefillah he left off, he is permitted to walk to pick up the safer, get a sitter, since this will enable him to restore his kavana. Nafal safer la'aretz, ve'enayach l'chavim. Mutulag beer can pick it up. Kishi Saima Bracha when he finishes the bracha that he's in. If the book falling book doesn't disrupt his concentration, he should continue. Now, in his khil espalchman as of his balbel, let's say he got confused. He forgot where he was. Mutu lelech lamakam ayadu a lolikach misham sidur. For example, let's say he's davening by heart. And he got he got confused. He can go to where a sitter is, get the sitter, and help him restore his kavod. The Mishabura in Simon 104 cites the Chai Adam, who permits walking to check a particular halacha in the middle of the Amita. Cause of a Chai Adam, ha'oyim bit feel of nistapik beis the din echis palo, right? You you forgot if you let's say. You forgot, you, you missed Yalav Yavosh. Do you have to go back and be Choyzer or not? So you forgot that din. He says, even you could speak to ask somebody. He thinks it's Mutter in order to be able to daven correctly. I mean, it's apparent from these examples of the Mishra Mura that one may move during Shemona Esrei if it's necessary to remove a distraction or to enable better concentration. Let's say wherever you are in the shul, it's noisy. From based on this, you could walk to another corner where it's quiet and continue your davening. But if you're asking somebody else, you're distracting the next person. We're talking about somebody who's not yeah. davening. The rav is let's let's say there's a a rav sitting as a okay. Bernie said obviously you wouldn't ask some, another person who's davening. We're talking about asking a person who's not davening shmon esrei. Contemporary poskim, such as the tefila kilchasa, and the yalkut yosef, cite other examples of potential interruptions during shmon esrei, for when for which one may be allowed to move if needed. Your phone rings. Or somebody knocks on the door. And 
he stopped his davening for a minute, hoping that the phone would stop ringing or the person who was at his door would go away. But it continued. He lost his kavana. Yelech v'yasir ha'shvoferet. He should sort of pick up the phone, right? Don't answer it, but just pick up the phone so it stops ringing. O yifta chadalet mevlili posik b'dibur. Open the front door without saying anything. V'yashuv miyad l'tfiloso. Then you can return to your davening. Tinek o yelet. You started davening and the, a child comes into the room that's being, being interrupted. You can gesture to them like this, you know, or, you know, to make, to quiet them. If you can't quiet them down, you can take steps away from them and go to a different place. In fact, you can even go over to them to quiet them. Without, without speaking. Says the Yakut Yosef, the Kovo Nofo, the Emtet Filish, when his hat falls on. Benisha but he's wearing his Yarmulka. It's an embarrassment for him to be wearing a Yarmulka without a hat. Human dignity um, will override even a lot. You can go to in the middle of Shmon Esrei to pick up the hat and put it on. Where does he get this principle that God will part of Rish and Dochal Lassa and Shabbatara? No, no. Uh, so I was going to, I was going to elaborate that. It's Doiche the the low tase of low sasur. That means rabbinic halacha is based on the love of low sasur. Low sasur yaminu small. Okay. That, that's where they get the koyak. So a but uh, they are Kovat Abriyas is not Doiche. For example, more in the the raya there in the more shotness. You're not allowed, you know, they're, they're, they're talking about, can you be loyfe shotness? Can you pull it off in the street? So, so a regular love, Kovat Abrius is not doicha. But it's doicha, if it's a, only a rabbinic love, doicha. Well, well. I'm surprised the footnote didn't comment on that. Here, the, the footnote comments on, it depends on if the custom is to wear a hat. In our shul, where the majority of people do not wear hats, I'm not sure the hatter would apply. 105. Aligning one's feet. We learned above that you should stand while reciting Shmon Esri. The Gemara Brachos states that one's feet must be aligned to model the practice of the angels. And we brought another proof tonight. We said it's it's connected to the avod in the base of Mikdash. The Quanim have to stand in a similar way. According to Rashi, this means that one's feet must be together next to each other, so they have the appearance of a single foot. It says Masech the Bracha is from Rav Yosi Rav Chanini Mishum Rav Eliezer Ben Yaakov. Hamispal Tzav Shichayv Nisraglo. You have to straighten your feet. Shenema Ragleim Regal Yishara. In the uh, Haftorah that we lay on Shvuas, which is the Haftorah of Yecheskel Perakalif, the Meister Markova, it describes the, 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 uh, the uh, various heavenly creatures that one of their attributes is Ragleim Regal Yishar. And says Rashi, Yechavinus Raglev, Zu Etzel Zu. You put your feet together, Ragleim Regal Yishar, near in Keregal Echot. Looks like Look like we're standing like on one foot. The Tamir Rabbeinu Yonah specify that one must place both feet so that they are aligned with one and another appearing like one. Just like the angels, which are described as having one foot. Kloimar says the Tamir Rabbeinu Yonah. Gotta make sure they're straight. 
Like so they look like it's one. The Lashon Regal. So that's Rashi and Rabbi Yona. In contrast to them, who understand the simple meaning of the Gemara to refer to placing one foot next to the other, the Talmud Yerushalmi explained that Pnei Moshe cites two opinions concerning the placement of the feet. One opinion maintains that one places them adjacent to each other, while the other one maintains that one must align them one in front of the other, heel to toe, similar to the Kohanim ascending the altar. So the Yerushalmi says, You must align your feet. And what does that mean, align? So train Amoyroin. There were two Amoyris, Rab Levi Rav Simon. Chadomar Kemalachim, like the angels. Chadomar Kekohanim, like they do the Avoda. Manar Kekohanim, Lo Salah, Bamal Lo Salah, Mizbechi. Shayim Hachim, Ekev Bitzad Godel, the Godel Etzel Ekev. They walked heel to toe, toe to heel. So, therefore, one opinion in Yerushalmi is that that's how you have to stand. They have no knees because they don't sit, they don't lie down, so they don't need that joint. Says the Ptei Moshe, which is a commentary on the Yerushalmi. There was a machlokas. What does it mean to align the feet? One in front of the other, Akev it's like Godel, the heel, heel toe, Kamashayo Kani Malch Magavi Akevashalam is bad. There was a ramp leading up to the base of Migdash, excuse me, leading up to the Mizbeach. And then the, when they got up to the top, they had to turn right. And then, they, for example, if you had to put blood on each corner, there was a, a <laughs> order that he, he had to walk up, heel toe. And then there was a, a nine amas up. There was a one ama walkway on the top of the Mizbeah. And in each corner was a one ama corner. So when he was doing a Zrika Saddam that way, now in the Besam, in the Mishkan, it was very small. The, the Mizbeah of Moshe Rabbein was very small. You could lean over and do all four right there. But in the Besam Mitesh, it was 32 by 32 amas. That's uh, two feet. You're talking about 64 by 64 feet, quite big on the top. <laughs> he walked around, but he had to do it heel to toe. <laughs> that means the feet had to be next to each other. The aloha normally follows the bavli, if it differs from the tama yurashab. If so, we would think that in this case, since the bavli only appears to mention the opinion that one stands the way that the angels stand, <laughs> with one's feet together, this is clearly the accepted halach. However, the tour in Orachai 95 cites both opinions mentioned in Yushalmi. And the Beis Yosef, in his commentary on the tour, wonders as to the reason for it. The Beis Yosef suggests that perhaps the Bavli is not explicit in its support for the opinion that one places both feet together next to each other. Because of a Talmud Shalanu, right? Our Talmud, the Bavli, holds like the one that says it's like angels. One foot next to another, so it looks like one foot. The Base Yosef points out why did the tour? confuse the issue, and bring the Yerushalmi. We have the Bavli, it says like Malachim, what was the point of the tour bringing the Yerushalmi, asks the Beis Yosef. Nire, he says it appears, Shrabenu Sover, Shem Hechrami Talmud Edidon. There's no absolute proof from our Talmud, the Bavli, the Tzorach Shei Gavin Raglov Ko'amar, the Efshar the Kekonim Ko'amar, the Ekev Etzad Godol Nami Raglov Ko'amar, the Perhaps the Bavli also would have thought that heel to toe, the way the Kohanim did, would also fill the bill. Because 
the var keman the amar kemalachim. The tour should, the Beis Yosef points out, the world is doing it, putting their feet together. So the tour should have said, well, let's look how the people do. They do like the malachim. Rabbi Elo Chashash, the div Rabbi Yona, Velonim, he didn't care. The Rabbi Yona said clearly, like malachim. And the tour didn't seem to care that the Minigal Oilam was to put your feet together. The other Rabbi, he says, Pumfa cared. Mashra Midvara, it appears from his words. Shuhusovar Kamadavar Kakohanim. Da Sosom La Kavosi, the Simon Sarachas. He was, he passed in that way in Simon Sarach, the Shakosom, the Ashvos or Golem Kakohanim, the Shasavoda. Umiu Yesh Lithok. You could reject all of what I just said. The Loimar. Um, he's not, re he really holds like the angels. And he's not really discussing the alignment. <laughs> he was just sort of trying to put us in a frame of mind. We should think like we're the Kohanim. And the alignment of the feet, it's, there's an opinion like this, an opinion like this. In summary, the tour presents both approaches, but he doesn't rule whether one should stand with one's feet like the Kohanim, one in front of the other, or like angels. The Beis Yosef suggests that the Talmud Bavli also doesn't take a stand on this. And is simply presenting the reason for why to keep one's feet together, but not describing the method of how to do so. Despite the tour's inconclusiveness and the Beis Yosef explanation and Shochanach rules that one places one feet together next to each other like the angels. He went like the Migan Ha'olam. Yichavin Raglav Zetzel Zeb Kivun. Kilo Eina Melech, like they're one. Ma'adva Sulam Halachim, to compare ourselves like the angels. Dechsiv Ben Raglam Ragli Yishara. The Mishnah Bura notes that the above requirement applies even if one must sit down to recite Shmon Esri. So if you're in the plane and davening, you should keep your feet together. Mishnah Bura also adds that one should not lean or stretch out his feet during the Shmon Esri in any manner that appears haughty. So, you know, you should sit like, you know, with your feet on the ground, like you're sitting in a chair. Mr. Bura, he's in a wagon. He should straighten his feet. He shouldn't uh, lean backwards like, like on a lawn chair or lean on the side or stretch or stretch out his legs or cross his legs, right? He should sit with his head bent forward. The Piskei Tshuva writes, the application to align one's feet is not essential if it's difficult for a person to do so. If it's very hard for a person to stand in one spot, he has a balance problem or whatever. He can, like Charlie Chaplin, he can Mm -hmm. Move, you know, his feet don't have to be like this, they can be like this a little bit. The daishim at meeting be ikvav, as long as they're connected by the heels. The shapir dami. That's allowed. The yoter kilachron and his gala would come and reshonim shakaimah bashitazu. The yeshur nagim, he found some reshonim that said that you could put your feet like this, not like this, and that that's a better way to do it. That's certainly not our meaning. Uzkainim chlushe korech o atzavim, or people are fidgety. Shekashon latzmi raglaim zman ma. They can't keep their feet together for a long period of time. Meglishi goreim lehem chlushe o bilbo machshav. It will cause them confusion. Begorim lebitu la kavon aritzui bitfila. You won't be able to concentrate properly. Bevade toviot yashiyim nu mitzmi nitz raglaim. So don't, don't put your feet together. Ki kavana satfila adifa. Having good kavana is more important. Does anybody have problems putting their feet together? Yeah, I have to replace 
No, I mean, in our group. I, I walk it, like this all the time, so yeah. naturally, it's I, hard. My feet so are it's separated. hard to hard to do it. It's hard to keep them together. Okay. Yes, okay. Fine. So we you certainly have a dvarei tov yoter shivnu mitzmidas raglayim. You should not align your feet if it's going to cause problems concentrating, because ki kavod asad tefila diva likivan shoyse ke machmas matzavo. He has his own personal issue. So it's not going to interfere in a Kodesh Baruch Hu being Makabalist Tefillah. He should put him together as much as he can. That's easy for him. As opposed to keeping his feet you know, completely apart. He shouldn't walk around during the davening. Heina veheina. Lo shum sibas oina Not during the davening. You mean during the amida? During the amida. Okay. During the amida. The obligation to align one's feet during the shmona esrei is also the basis for another halacha concerning the definition of when of when one has concluded the shmona esrei. According to Shulchan Aruch, one who has taken three steps back known as Akira's Raglaim, uprooting the feet, is considered as having concluded his Shmona Esrei with respect to certain cases. The reason for this is presumably that once he has moved backwards, it signifies the termination of his standing before God. Says the Shulchan Imlo Sho'a Motar. Let's say he didn't ask for rain in the same Talamotar. Viniskar koidim shemet fila, and before he gets to shemet fila, he remembers. So ein machzirin also. You don't go back to the same talamotar, but rather shoyel the shemet fila. In the brach of shemet fila, you say the same talamotar. Vimloniskar ad achar shemet fila. So let's say he remembered that he didn't say the same talamotar. By until after Shemet Fila. Then, if he hasn't taken his three steps back, he goes back to Birchas Hashanim. And if he has taken his three steps back, he's got to go to the beginning of the Davani. Is that just to say the same Talmud, not, the, not starting at the same Talmud and going on, just inserting that before Shemet Fila? He asks it in Shomer Tfila, but if he finishes Shomer Tfila, then he goes, goes back to Birchaz uh, and he has to continue Shemon Esri from that location. And if he already took the three steps back, he has to start the Shemon Esri from the beginning. Thus, one who forgot the same Tal must repeat the entire Shemon Esri if he has uprooted his feet. Since standing with his feet together is considered the symbol of being engaged in the Tfila. Nevertheless, the Shulchan Aruch adds that if a person's mindset is such that he's completed the Shmon Esrei, he's also halakhically considered to be finished, even if he hasn't uprooted his feet. Let's say in his mind, okay, I'm done. Right? This is, right, right, this is a, when, when you say, Yehul Rotson Imre Fi, at that point, you may now say other tefillos that you want to say, your own personal tefillos. Once you say, so now you can, be, you can say other things before you take your three steps back. But he's saying, if someone is not usual to make other tachanunim, and he sort of completed Shimon in his mind, it's considered as if he finished regarding this halacha of the Saint Talmud and going back. The Mishnah Bura writes that in practice, one is considered to have completed Shmon Esri nowadays when saying the words of Yehil Rotson, Imre Fi, at the end of the paragraph known as Lokainat Sor. I'm sorry. 
you say it right before you heal Ratzon. You say your Tachanunim and then you conclude it with you heal Ratzon. That concludes, you may not say Tachanunim after that. So, it's considered as if you're done, if you said the Yehil Ratzon, and then you'd have to go back if you didn't do the same Talmud. It's evident from here that one's physical stance during Shemona Esri is symbolic of the fact that one is engaged in a conversation with Hashem. So when one mentally decides that he has finished the conversation, it's considered halakhically completed regardless of whether one has moved his feet or not. Now, I don't know whether they're gonna bring it later, they might, but I remember Rabbi Krauss once taught us that when you take the steps back to start your Shimon Esrei, it's considered that you're in a status of Lifnei Hashem. What does it mean, Lifnei Hashem? It's mamish, like you were in the Kodesh Kodoshim, like the Kohen Godel on Yom Kippur. That, that some hold that that is the status of what we are doing when we're davening Shimon Esrei. We're li literally on that level of, of closeness to Hashem that the Kohen Godel goes there once a year and on Yom Kippur with fasting and everything like that. And here, we're zoche to be lifnei Hashem on a daily basis, three times a day. The proper pose during the Amidah. So we've talked about standing. We've talked about what to do with our feet. So what is the proper posture for the rest of the body? So this is addressed by the Gemara Yuvamas, which cites the Machlokas. What should you do with your eyes? Should it be upward or downward? They were sitting, one of them opened up and said, I'm his father, one who's saying, so he should put his eyes down. Meaning, Hashem, his eyes and his heart are there all the time. What's there? It's referring to Eretz Yisrael. So you should be looking down at the ground because that's where Hashem is thinking. Charam Arvein of Lamala. Shenem Nisa Levavenu El Kapayim. No, we're going to elevate our, our hearts. Adach Yasra Yishma Bravez Gabayu. Meanwhile, Rabbi Shmuel joined this discussion. What are you dealing with? With the sugi of tefillah. So said Rabbi Yoisi. Now Rabbi Yoisi was one of the five tanoim. Rabbi Kiva had 24,000 students. They died between Pesach and Atzeres. Gemara says, I don't remember exactly which Masech that's in, because he went down to the Dorum and he gave smicha to five new Talmidim. Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai, Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Yehuda, like in Shabbos, you always have a machlokas, Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Yehuda, Dover Shem is Kaving. Rabbi Shimon says Potter, Rabbi Yehuda says Chai. Everywhere in Shabbos, Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Yehuda. Those are the, those, and then Rabbi Yoisi. So Rabbi Yoisi, now think about it. All the Torah Shavuot we have are from those five Talmidim. Rabbi Yossi was one of the major teachers of Rabbi Yudha Nasi. It, it came down to Rabbi Meir and then down to Rabbi Yudha Nasi. So they always say Rabbi Yossi Nimuko Imo. Pretty much we always pass it like Rabbi Yossi when he says something in Shas. So what I wanted to say is look at how much Torah we have with the, Rabbi Kiva was the main transmitter of Torah Shabbat Peh. But the conduit was those five Talmidim. Can you imagine how much Torah we would have if we would have had 24,000 Talmidim spreading that Torah? So this is Rabbi Shmuel, the son of Rabbi Yossi. He said, this is what my father said. It's very important because it's Rabbi Yossi. 
means your eyes should be down, but your heart should be up. Now, the Rishonim challenged the opinion that one must direct one's eyes downward. That seems to be the Maskon and the Gemara. From the Gemara and Brachas that says one must pray in a room with windows, which Rashi explains is to be able to see the heavens and focus one's minds on the tefillah. This seems to imply that one should look upwards to increase concentration. Says Brachis, who notes that this difficulty prompted the Tamida Rabbeinu Yona to explain the need for windows as not being able to look upwards, but to ensure good airflow in the room the Mari Abu Ab then resolves the problem, even according to Rashi, by suggesting that the windows would prompt him to look upward occasionally, which is permitted. Because of Rabbeinu Agodal Mari Abu Ab, says the Beis Yosef, the Nekush Yizu Pirshu Tamini Arav Yoyna, the time of the Bayish the, Yeshmoch, the, that the reason that you need to daven in a house that has windows, Eino El Kadesh Yabais Metukan Bavir Tov, has nothing to do with looking up. They want good airflow. What Rashi said very clearly that the windows is to be in your heart. That would be a problem for Rashi. Rashi didn't mean that his eyes should be up all the time. That if in passing he happens to look up, his heart will be humble. In other words, Rashi can argue that even if the purpose of the windows is to look upwards, it does not mean that one should direct one's eyes upwards the entire time. But if he happens to incidentally look up, he will see the heavens and feel more submissive to Hashem. How does the Shulchan Aruch Paskin? The Shulchan Aruch rules in accordance with the conclusion of the Gemara Yuvamas that one should bend his head downward slightly, but direct his heart towards heaven. Shulchan Aruch elsewhere codifies the ruling concerning having windows in the shul, though he does not mention the reason of Rashi or Rabbeinu Yonah. Rather, he makes reference to a different idea concerning the importance of the windows being in the east, opposite Jerusalem, which is based upon the Rambam and the second explanation of Rabbeinu Yonah. It's not just better light, but you know, not better air, but better light, which is what the Rift brought. Um, in contrast, oh, you have to bend your head down, so your eyes will sort of be focused to the ground. You have to think like you're in the temple. But it's not just in the temple, it's Lifnei Hashem. It's Lifnei Hashem. The different areas that are considered Lifnei Hashem, the Beis HaMikdash. In contrast to the implication of Shulchan Aruch, that one should direct his eyes downward, but keep them open. The Mishnaburah quotes Achronim who argues strongly that one should close one's eyes while reciting the Amida, unless the, reading the words from a sitter. Those that pick their heads up and look at the roof, the angels are laughing at them. Whoever doesn't close his eyes during Shmon Esrei will not see the Pnei Shechina when he departs. But if he's looking at the sitter, that doesn't, if you're reading the words in the sitter, that's not a problem. Okay, I'm going to stop here because um, I'd like to go and I'd like to read this Zohar a little more carefully. I want to give some time for questions and we'll finish um, this section next week. Any comments, questions, ha'aros?
Jacob, we can't hear you. Oh, I, what I heard from Rav Jake is to mention, right? Everyone has a, their name is a pasuk, like Eli Melech has a name. There's a certain pasuk, Elech Hashem, whatever. There's a pasuk, but it, it, right now we certainly didn't bring any. But we we didn't. I think we'll get to the conclusion of Shmon Esrei and they'll discuss things in more detail then. But we did learn tonight that you're allowed to do your own personal tachanunim in the Elokinet Sor. And then when you say Yehil Ratzon and Fi, that concludes it. After the Tachanunim? Oh, after the Yehil Ratzon? Jacob, we can't hear you very well. There's some... We, what is that? Before you hear the old terms, after the word Varnedi. Yeah, and but you can say other tachanunim. Per, a person has their own personal needs. They need a refuah. They need something, whatever. You can enunciate all of that in the Elokinet Sor. And then, I guess, where you fit the pasuk. And then when you say Yehil Rotson Imre Fi, that concludes the Daphne. Is that your minute, Jacob? I say the postage. You say the postage, and you don't say other Tachanunim? What was that? I only say what it's in the Siddha. What it's the Siddha said. Okay. Yeah, but you, you heard tonight that people do say Tachanunim. And, and have yeah. other davening, other requests at that point. Right. If, if the minion gives you time to do that. If, if they give you time to do that. I, uh,